hi guys uh, welcome back to my youtube channel this still feels surreal to me so i'm gonna need to say it again uh, welcome back to my youtube channel my name is andy and i am the face behind re and the blog before i start today's video i wanted to thank everyone who has subscribed liked and commented in the previous video Thank you so much for the support. I truly appreciate each and every one of you. And in case you've missed it, I mentioned in my previous video that I live in Shenzhen, China, and I have been living here now for a year and a half, which is a relatively short time for China because it takes you at least six months just to acclimate and get used to the new environment and the new culture. Personally, it took me a full year to feel like okay i got the hang of this and i can actually live here so looking back a year and a half later there's some things that really surprise me when it comes to china some are great and some not so great so today i will be recapping those moments with you and without any further ado let's get started thing that surprised me about China is how green the country is. When I arrived in Shenzhen, I expected high-rise buildings and that it would just be concrete on concrete. But to my surprise, Shenzhen has a lot of gorgeous parks, guys. These parks are well maintained. Some even have man-made lakes. Uh, they are stunning and I love how they are well incorporated into the city and every time I'm walking around it truly feels like you are in this uh, urban oasis and in addition to being green I did not expect Shenzhen to have the sustainability policies in place that truly enrich the quality of the life here and a good example is how the entire fleet of public buses in Shenzhen are now electric yes all of them are electric and they've been electric since 2017 and I think to date they are at about 90 to 95 percent of having all the local cabs also electric now I recently read um, an article stating that they would also try to get the logistics trucks so uh, these are your commercial trucks to also run on electric energy and that is huge because this reduces the air pollution in the city the next thing i am going to share with you guys is my absolute favorite thing about china and that is the napping culture yes the napping culture is one thing that truly surprised me about the country so what it is is that in china when you have a lunch break it's typically two hours the first hour you eat and the second hour you take a nap which means that wherever you're employed you are allowed to take a nap at work or you can go home and take a nap at home so that is amazing to me like I don't know many countries that do that I do know Spain has a siesta as well something similar um, but it's not very common in um, you know America Europe and African countries the next thing that surprised me about China is how friendly the locals are here but let me zoom in on Shenzhen on this one I feel like in Shenzhen people tend to be more friendlier than they normally would because this is a city of migrants so everyone who's here is not really from Shenzhen so they're a bit more welcoming to outsiders because everyone technically is an outsider but I've had instances where we were struggling with luggage in the subway and you know a guy would just come and help us I've had locals 
uh, show me around uh, not just point out directions like physically walk me to where I need to go and again because Shenzhen was created to pretty much uh, attract foreign investment into China so people here do put a lot of effort in terms of learning English so sometimes when they do see a foreigner to them it's their opportunity to actually practice with a native speaker so they will be very friendly and in the hopes that you can you know converse with them in English and they get to practice so it's a two-way stream where I'm trying to get whatever it is that I'm looking for and they get their English practice so I also do find that uh, some Chinese guys use the practicing my English excuse as a way of shooting their shot because it's happened to me so many times where someone wanted to exchange contacts and then I would help them with their English and literally guys the first thing they will send is oh do you have a Chinese boyfriend and I'm like that does not sound like practicing English to me so yeah this one time I exchanged uh, contacts with this guy and he was so cute hey? he was tall athletic I think he played uh, professional uh, basketball and typically you know I don't even check out Asian men like that but I was like listen it's looking like it could rain some Malaysian babies here because you know, the brother on top of being a tall and built man he had these like chiseled jaw lines yo i was like mm -mm. anyways i'm deviating from the conversation so let me get back to the things that surprised me about china the next thing that surprised me about china is the food like wow china is a food heaven and to be honest with you you don't really know if you like Chinese food or not until you've had it in China because it is nothing like what the Western world serves first of all I didn't even know that Chinese food is so spicy yeah they love their food super spicy like not even a good kick but like numbing like and since arriving here like I feel like I've discovered these new fruits and vegetables that I didn't even know existed uh, mushrooms guys like I think there's hundreds of different mushroom species in China all of which are very delicious If you are not uh, an adventurous eater, then Chinese cuisine might not be the thing for you. But the advantage of eating Chinese food in Shenzhen is that it's readily available and it's definitely much cheaper than going to a Western restaurant. The next thing I am going to share is my least favorite thing about China and that is the non-stop spitting. Now this one caught me by surprise, hey? People spit, in addition to smoking, they will spit everywhere. Now, it would be completely different if, you know, they kept it cute and, you know, they spat in a, a tissue or something like that. Make it discreet, you know. No, they don't. They will literally drag it. Everywhere you go, you will hear the sound. Oh, it is so disgusting, guys. Like, when I hear that sound, I just want to close my ears and scream because I just know what's going to happen. They're going to spit. Here's a funny story. This one time I was at Walmart and you know, I'm buying my groceries. I think I was around the fresh fruit section and this old man, you know, does the sound. And I'm like, please don't, please don't. And guess what? Yes, he did. He spat inside the grocery store, guys. I kid you not. And I did give him a dirty look. And guess what he did? He looked at me like I was the problem. I was like, what? 
You are the problem. I was like, ah, ah, Tatanzini, you are the problem. He looked at me like I was the problem. I honestly don't even know why they spit this much, but I've come to the conclusion that perhaps people of Chinese descent excrete more mucus than the average person, hence they need to spit so much. I don't know. But fortunately, I haven't seen that on the train, but I believe in Shenzhen it's banned. But I do recall seeing a video on YouTube about someone spitting on a public bus in another city. So I just wish it would just stop. And the good thing now too is because of COVID, everyone's required to wear a mask. So I realized that when everyone's wearing a mask, people spit less so i hope we never go back to not wearing masks i would rather burn in a mask in 100 degree weather than to hear that awful sound and to actually see someone spit the next thing that surprised me about china is that it's a cashless society and by that i mean no one uses physical notes or coins uh, the entire payment process here now is digitalized so you can either pay through wechat or alipay and wechat is this amazing app which if you're in china you literally cannot live without you need it to do everything basically and this app allows you to connect your banking details and when you go to the grocery store or uh, if you're buying online or whatever purchase you need to make you simply scan the qr code and it deducts money from your bank and voila you have paid and to be honest it's very convenient to not have to worry about your wallet all you need is just your phone and you are good to go the next thing i have to mention is the security and the surveillance well this one did not really surprise me because i knew that china is very strict on censorship and surveillance but it wasn't until i arrived in shenzhen and started to see all the these cameras when I was like oh snap this is real and these cameras are everywhere guys on the street inside train stations even if you are in a dingy alley in the middle of nowhere best believe there is a surveillance camera and also there tends to be a huge police presence uh, or even security like around streets they might not do anything but they're just there and now this one is very tricky and controversial for a lot of the people in the West because they feel like it's an invasion of their privacy uh, this and the other personally I don't mind the surveillance out on the streets because I won't be doing anything that is indecent or that cannot be seen in public as much as the surveillance is controversial but it is also the very same thing that makes China a safe place a few months back I also shared on my Twitter that a good friend of mine lost her cell phone in a cab and for some reason the cab driver turned off the cell phone and so at the police station she was busy trying to call the phone and it was off but the police used the surveillance footage from that night when we were out at a club uh, to track her whereabouts and the driver and I kid you not in a matter of three hours the police were able to recover the cell phone and Shenzhen is a city of about 12 million people so to be able to do that in three hours is kind of crazy to me and scary at the same time the next thing that surprised me about China is how futuristic the country is I don't think that the Western world does a good job at capturing how far ahead they are in terms of technology I don't think I've even lived in a city that's so advanced in artificial intelligence like I remember like years back reading about how robotics are going to be a part of life very soon and in Shenzhen they truly are a part of our daily lives even just in my building to access the security gate I need to go through a facial recognition security system 
where it scans my face and recognizes that I live in this building and then it opens the gate for me and there's always security at the gate uh, so if you don't live here uh, the system will not open for you obviously next thing I want to mention is the advanced transportation system and infrastructure this did not really surprise me I knew a whole lot about the strides and uh, advancement that China has made over the past few years as far as transportation is concerned but to finally be here and use these four forms of transportation has been quite an experience. The first thing I want to highlight is the maglev. Now if you don't know what a maglev is, it is simply a train that uses magnetic levitation for traveling. So these are extremely fast trains. Uh, they run to speeds of about 430 kilometers per hour. So that is very, very, very fast. And the first one was built here in China and began operations in 2002. Unfortunately, they don't have one here in Shenzhen. The one that is running, I believe, runs around Shanghai, so I'm yet to experience that, but I'm looking forward to it. Uh, I believe to date, only two other countries have a maglev, South Korea and Japan. I could be wrong, but I do know that uh, not a lot of countries have that type of uh, transportation system. It's not even just about the maglev. On a daily basis, I use the metro, and the system is very well connected it's clean it's efficient it's always on time and since i arrived in shenzhen i think they've managed to open uh, six additional lines so this is within a span of a year and a half like if you know anything about constructing subways you would know that is ridiculous like usually it takes maybe on average to just make one line at least a year for most like countries so to have six lines in uh, a year and a half is quite impressive and then of course there's the high-speed train so most cities in china are very well connected with the uh, high-speed train or bullet train uh, i love traveling with it uh, because it's cheaper than flying and more reliable and gives you more flexibility to a certain extent when it comes to infrastructure uh, China is taking on these really complex uh, projects. They aren't building shoe boxes and they are pouring billions towards uh, infrastructure. I think uh, the latest airport in Beijing costed about maybe 1 billion USD, some crazy amount like that. But even that, just like normal structures like um, libraries, uh, apartment buildings they are like going for really complex designs and I've noticed that there's uh, an architectural firm that they use a lot here called Zaha Hadid uh, they are actually my favorite architects because I've worked in the built environment for most of my career so I do follow a lot of uh, what's going on in construction and design even when it comes to apartment buildings like China has really tall apartment buildings Buildings. These buildings have anywhere from 30 to 40 floors and that's quite tall for an apartment building. Uh, my building has 31 floors so still relatively tall and that's quite the norm here and you would think they take like maybe a couple of years to build them. No, they build them in months like literally like three to four months they can finish like a skyscraper uh, so it happens to me all the time here in Shenzhen if I don't go to an area like for a couple of months the next time I visit that area voila there's a new like tall building or they've literally recreated the area it's just shocking how fast they work another thing that surprised me about China is people really value a good quality life here and by that I mean People make time to be out in nature, so you'll see a lot of people going hiking, even waking up in the morning just to go to the park and exercise. 
also physical activity is a big thing so not just going to the gym maybe you see some people practicing Tai Chi or some form of yoga uh, meditation in some instances uh, and also self-care like I realized self-care in China is a big thing and I see this in how much people love massages here you could be walking down the street and there'll be salespeople trying to sell massage packages and I always laugh because the way they pronounce it in uh, Mandarin or Chinese is massage like massage and it reminds me of closer because in closer I would say I'm going to get a massage so <laughs> I'm just like always laughing every time they say it but the massages are really really good since I am trying not to make this video super long I am gonna go ahead and get into my last item of things that surprised me about China and that is warm water cures everything yes you heard me right warm water cures everything I know you're probably thinking what the heck <laughs> well this is a joke this is a joke um, but in China people drink warm water all the time even if it's a hundred degrees outside they'll drink warm water if you're sick the first thing they will tell you is drink warm water do you have a headache drink warm water do you have diarrhea? Drink warm water. Did you sprain your ankle? Yep, you guessed it. Drink warm water. <laughs> I always just use it as a joke because it's so funny to me. But I actually also have started drinking a lot of uh, warm water and it does make me feel good. Maybe it's just water in general, I don't know. But I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will catch you in the next one. And you know, living in China is full of surprises. So I'm pretty sure I am going to keep uncovering more and more things that continue to surprise me. But I hope they surprise me in a good way. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and comment, and I will catch you in the next video.